I'm so glad to be here today. All the poems that I'm going to read have been published. The first one is The Guy Magnet. A fender bender put my car in the shop for an extended stay. I was glad when my granddaughter offered her pride and joy for my convenience. She teased when she said, Grandmother, my red Mercedes convertible is a guy magnet. You'd better get ready for attention. I'll admit I got a bit excited. Well, it was raining the first two days I had it and nobody noticed me at all. Then things started to pick up, but it was just my friends who wondered where I got such a sporty ride. They were all married anyway. Later on a bright, sunshiny day, two different guys honked at me. When I waved, they both motioned me to move over to the slow lane. Everyone said I needed to put the top down. That would do the trick. I bought the long blonde wig they suggested and donned the rhinestone glass sunglasses they advised and hit the open road. I revved her up to 60 before the wind caught the wig twirled it into the air and under the wheels of the 18-wheeler behind me. There I sat in her red Mercedes convertible, going 60 miles an hour with the wind whipping my short gray hair into a frenzy. But all is not lost. I still have the sunglasses. My choice of color. Since I was a little girl, purple has been my favorite color. When I had it my way, I would certainly choose no other. Eighty-one years since a girl, my dark hair long ago turned to gray. Balance is off, bruises show up, so I still wear purple every day. Perfect Harmony I dreamed of you last night. We sat waistless on the back of the great winged horse, our bodies close, heads held high as we soared across the heavens. Higher and higher we rose, with exhilaration promise of adventure, soft hair gently blowing and wisp of chiffon floating in the night sky, radiant smiles and twinkling eyes of affirmation, affirmation to perfect harmony. We were as one, poets and muse, bound for nowhere and everywhere, lost in the wonder of our journey. Sprinkles of words fell from the stars and settled in the mist around us, arranging themselves in a thousand ways, charting a course for us to share with the world our fascination with words. This was my first PST win. The guest at our spring. We sit on the side of the spring, two girls lost in wonder, gazing into the crystal water, so clear it looks as though you could touch the bottom. Tiny sand bubbles release pure liquid from the earth, dip a hand into its coolness, lift to lips and taste with joy. Lean into the concrete cylinder, try to get more water into the mouth than the nose. Water runs over the sides, making a tiny scream that drifts under bushes. We don't even wonder where it goes. Something catches our eye. The bottom in its bubbles also has a living guest. Tiny water dog, like a soft lizard, floats in the spring's current. Knowing we had drunk from the same water could not dampen our spirits. Two girls sitting on the side of a spring, discovering the world one day at a time. The box under the bed. I could smell them even though they were not meant to arrive until he came every year. I was getting a little wiser and even each year a little afraid of learning whether my suspicions were true. If they were, I might not be able to pretend I wasn't curious about the box under the bed and the smell that permeated the air only this time of year. 
Mother had been making candy, baking cakes, and I knew the rooster she had been fattening would no longer wake us in the morning. Good things would grace our table Christmas Day, and I could, at last, talk about the wonderful apples and oranges I smelled that he had left in my stocking. Regeneration Cream It'll take away your crow's feet and the wrinkles in your chin. I said, give me that miracle stuff. Stand back while I begin. I've used it every morning and the ending of each day. It seems this stuff is working as the lines just fade away. When I look in the mirror and see a younger look in me, I really wish my older friends could see me as I see. I know just how to use it but don't know for how long. I might get too young looking if timing is all wrong. I wouldn't mind you looking youngish, but not like real young girls. So tomorrow I go to town and get color back on my curls. If you happen to see me when I step out at night, don't be asking me questions if it is working right. I'm not hunting for a husband. Don't go helping me to look. But if I happen to find one, say that cream's all it took. <clears throat> my legacy from my father's mother. She took my hand and had me walk with her, one small child, one adoring grandmother. She wanted her granddaughter to know her love of earth. The world around her smell flowers beside the path they took to the old spring. Her finger gently touched a silver bug, causing it to fly. She pointed out to each family of ants, wasps, bees that made their home along our way. She was as e eager as I to get on her knees for a better look at the soft water dog floating in the depths of the spring. We held our breaths and gazed at the fragile beauty of the orange and black butterfly as it sat on, for a little while on the black back of her blue-veined hand. She talked of how all the insects, birds, and animals lived together, how each made his own way in the world. And someday I would be a woman and I would take my place in that world. She never mentioned she wouldn't be there to share in the adventure, but somehow I think she knew. This is the first time I won a poem that paid money. So fragile. She sit, it sits so firmly on her sleeve with features as fragile as the wings of a butterfly as delicate as a web in morning dew. It is never very clearly seen, but you know without looking it is there as always, waiting to be hurt and maimed. She doesn't intend to wear it so, and certainly wishes it no harm, but places it there as her defense, like a shield on her arm. When the deed is done, she takes it down to nurse it back to health. You can tell from the look in her saddened eyes it was you who shattered the delicate feeling she wears there on her sleeve. This is for my mother's mother. She watched six years. She stands in the back door as she did so many times when he was alive, gazing out across the pasture scanning the hillside for his image somewhere along the fence row. She had always been anxious in those last years, anxious to have him back safely at home where she could be sure he was all right. Should he tarry too long, she would step to the porch. Thomas! would resound across the hills. He never answered, but would soon be visible slowly ambling along making his way back to the, her protective care. Many nights she would wake to silence and gently shake his shoulder. Tom, 
are you all right? Without fully waking, yes would be his only reply. She stands now, gazing across the pasture, wondering how she will ever be able to sleep again. It pays to plan ahead. All month I had seen sticky notes and notations on envelopes scattered about my house, purse, and my car. It was an 800 number with 29 circled in red after the number. I had planned to call and see what it was for, but kept putting it off. Now it was the 29th and I was seated in a restaurant waiting for my daughter. Just to kill time, I fished my phone from my purse, found one of the envelopes and dialed the number. I was still laughing when my daughter arrived. I pushed the replay button and let her hear me in my own voice singing happy birthday to me. <clears throat> Time is of the essence. I sit before computer, pick a category, scroll down, pick a poem, revise poem, discard revision, wonder if my friends are before computers working on a deadline, wasting time, picking, changing, crossing fingers, and sending original. Thank you very much for allowing me to do this, and I'll see you in November. Bye-bye.